Hello, uh, I've been working on a RAM, mod RAM module, and I think I've created something pretty special over here. So, I'm going to use this as RAM, but it works more like flash, flash storage, because it uses comparators to store information. So, like, I can use a, a hexadecimal signal, this is, this is the input, and send a value like 1, and it'll store 1. Uh, you can see that right on the uh, power symbol right here, power data. So I can increase this to 10, and that'll store 10. And I can do that by having um, having the X and the Y coordinate activated. So it's active high, and uh, and then you store it by uh, by sending the, a signal through the write enable. So this is a write enable signal. And then there we go. And you can see that the pistons moved and everything. And that stored the value 10. And that value is getting outputted right here. 10, as you can see. And if I take this away, uh, take book, it's still 10. I can switch this off and we're, we don't have this cell activated anymore. And you can see it's not on, but then if I switch this on, we get the signal back again. And it's mostly quiet except for whenever you're writing something. Okay, um, it's done with two cells of uh, that are four by four by four, so 64 blocks in volume, and it uh, it stores four bits of data, so one through 16, well, zero through 15 technically. And uh, it's stored with compar two comparators facing into each other, like right here. Uh, wait one sec. The actual comparators, sorry, I just copied this over, uh, are this one and this one. So this comparator points into this block, and that powers this, this uh redstone dust, which powers the block below it, which powers this comparator, which powers this block, which powers this redstone dust, which powers this block, which powers the comparator, and you get a circle of power. So it stays constant. And then whenever you write, you erase it by pushing this block out of the way, and this comparator no longer sees the power from this comparator, or from this redstone dust. Okay, so... And this is scalable, so one fits right next to another, and right above another, and that's what I did over here. Uh, I put four, t four right next to each other, so this right here, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, are is one cell, and there's four of them. There's one here, one here, and one here. Okay, and it's also scalable straight upward, which is what I did here, but you can't access each individual byte then. So you'd have to have a controller to store the information and then write to it again. But uh, this is like a, like kind of like a QLC kind of thing in, um, if you know anything about SSDs and flash storage, which I don't, I just think that that might be how it works. Um, and th this also technically works that way, but most of the time you store one byte at a time, so it should be okay. Um, and you send in the data through this uh, this cyan bluish uh, line. You can send in one through whatever, and the data comes out on this purple line, right on top of each other. And again, you can turn on each individual cell. So uh, I'm going to turn all of them off. So no, none of them should be outputting anything. But if I wanted this cell right here to be on, then I would have to turn on this X and this Y. And all, you can see this uh, uh, this torch, or sorry, my bad, this torch should turn on. And that's the one that's enabling the output. Um, and 
as you can see here, we're getting an output that was stored in there previously, which is just a value 9. Again, you can see that on the power. And, um, and we can store 0 to it real quick by, since we already have this activated, we can send a signal through the write enable, and now it's stored at 0. So uh, my plans are to use this to build a decent RAM module, which I kind of did over here. This is one kilobyte, but it uses an old design that's laggier. So I want to switch it over because this, this design isn't too bad on the lag, but I scaled it up even more after this to 65 kilobytes and it is just ridiculously laggy. And also I need two kilobytes for that screen, which, uh, yeah, I, I need, I need to store data on this, the data for this screen and one kilobyte isn't enough. I want more. So actually what I'm planning to do for the, this is off topic, but what I'm planning to do is have one of these columns right here, each this four by four cell uh, all the way down to store the data for one row up there. So I'd have this copied over 128, uh, sorry, not 128 long, um, 32 long and 32 wide, which is 32 by 32 is 128, and that should give me the value. I hope I didn't just sound stupid. 32 by 32 is not 128. That's that's not what I meant. Uh, 16 by 16, which is 256, and I'm gonna store two screens worth of data. Okay. Um. I think that's it. Um, just to show you guys, because you probably want to see, this is the 60, uh, 64 kilobytes of data and what it looks like in Minecraft. Usually I have problems even recording over here <laughs> or even moving over here. As you can see, I'm, I'm just frozen right now. Okay. And... I'm just going to climb to the top of this and then zoom in over here. So it actually goes beyond the render distance. I'm ha having to use Optifine and I usually go up to 40 chunks and literally just moving across a chunk border, which is what I did right then, lags me out to heck every time I cross a chunk border. Wait, I'm just going to TP back, but it goes out so far in each direction. Wait, TP back to zero, zero. Sometimes I have to relog because there's just so much data over there that the computer crashes. Give it a second. It still thinks I'm over at the 65,000 area. Yeah, I'm gonna have to relog. Wait. That's enough for now. If you guys have more questions in the chat, leave that in the comments below, I guess.